Thanks so much for making our tails wag by watching this guest interview from Arden Moore's Four-Legged Life. Welcome back to Arden Moore's Four-Legged Life show. Our next guest is the top dog at the National <laughs> Animal Supplement Council. He's here to, today to unleash some great advice to keep your pet healthy. So join me in giving pause and applause to the president of the National Animal Supplement Council, Bill Bookout. Hey, welcome to the show, Bill. Arden, Arden, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to join you, Casey, Kona, and Emma. <laughs> yeah, and, and I uh, stand in the back, and you got a couple of fine felines. I do. I, br I bring with me Marmalade, who's our feral cat that adopted us a couple of years ago, and then Yana is just out of frame. She... <laughs> Uh, she's a rescue cat from the Navajo Indian Reservation. Her name, Yanaha, means brave in Navajo. Ah, so we got her wondering. almost I didn't years. know if it meant brave or give me another treat. I wasn't sure what it was. Or, or it, this is, or yeah, or hit the lotto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, the world of pet supplements, as you know, Bill, is just exploded. It's huge. Yep. And that lends itself to some canine confusion and feline frustration in some of our pet parents um, because many of us, we want to serve our pets quality food, but we also want to smartly select some supplements that they may need to bring out their best. And uh, I'm going to say it right now. Help, Mr. Bill! <laughs> so well, hopefully, yeah, I'm happy to do that, Arden, and hopefully I can bring a little you know, clarity and just basic thought processes to, you know, because there's so many choices out there, right? There is, I mean, and all, that's where we need yeah. you. And I know that the National Animal Supplement Council, you guys are celebrating your 20th birthday, and, and that's a big deal. So tell us first why we need to know what NASC is and why we need after the show to go to animalsupplements.org. Yep. So NASC is a, a, a nonprofit industry trade association we represent about 300 brands nice. we've expanded over our 20-year history do we also include qualifying raw material suppliers contract manufacturers in other words people that make products and they you know somebody sells them under their name and label a lot of dog food and cat food companies do that as well they're not fully vertically integrated we also have testing laboratories we have other products and services insurance legal packaging um things like that. So NESC was formed in 2001 by me. My, my background, I think I'd like oh, to you, tell you. You already know the question I'm going to ask you. <laughs> well, I'd like to tell your listeners a little bit about how I got sure. into this business. Absolutely. Um, you know, I was, a, I was an executive in the medical device and, and drug business and I, where I spent 15 years. I was chief operating officer for a $500 million medical device and drug company. Wow. But I'm raised in Wyoming and I had two labs. One of them had hip dysplasia, the other one had cancer. And so I'm looking for help with my own dogs. Absolutely. And so I did a career change. I had them both successfully treated and I transitioned from human medicine to animal medicine. I took a slot as CEO for the third largest specialty companion animal referral center, veterinary hospital. I did that for three years. But in the course of that experience, my cancer comes back second time around on my own dog, Lancelot. He's an 11 and a half year old Labrador retriever. And although I work with all these board certified oncologists and highly qualified specialists, I, I was given a very poor prognosis for my own dog. You know, I was given three months with chemotherapy and I'm not going to do that for 11 and a half year old dog. No. So at that point, I'm like any other pet owner, I'm looking for help. And so I find a veterinarian. I did some research. I completely changed his diet. We formulated a supplement product and he lived two and a half years, good quality of life, which wasn't long enough, Arden, but I was thankful for no, that. No, but think about you had a three month diagnosis with very, yeah. and you know, Chemo t is a is a pummel. It pummels yeah. the body. So, uh, but so Lancelot, yep. you gave Lancelot a couple more plus years of quality of life. That's right. And and so out of that experience, I decided I'm going to start my own company selling supplements for animals. Okay. Well, I you would think with somebody with my background, you know, I have a highly regulated background. I'd done drug approvals, device approvals on the human side. I'd be able to figure out what the right path forward was from a regular. <laughs> Good luck, right? Point, right? Yeah. Well, I made every mistake you can possibly make, it seems like. Okay. And so the supplement industry in 2001 was actually threatened because we're regulated at two levels. A lot of people don't understand this. A lot of people think this is an unregulated industry, and it isn't. Mm -hmm. 
we are actually more strictly or rigorously regulated than human dietary supplements in the fact that we're regulated at, by the Food and Drug Administration, Center for Veterinary Medicine at the federal level. Right. We're also potentially regulated, depending on what the statutes in individual states say. We're, regu we're regulated by the state as well through the Department of Agriculture or some other department either as animal nutritional products, food, or animal remedy products, depending on the intended use. I did so, not know that. Yep, most people don't. Because most people think it's an unregulated industry, and it's not. So I didn't know it either, right? So anyway, in 2001, there's no category for dietary supplements for animals like there is for people. And so the industry was literally threatened with removing these products from the marketplace. Well, they've been very helpful in, you know, helping my dog, Right. live longer quality and quantity of life. And I didn't think that was right. So we put together a plan and approached FDA and state regulators and associations like AFCO, the Association of American oh, yeah. Feed Control Officials. We put together a plan that offered them a responsible solution or what we believed was a responsible solution and a responsible path forward that would not remove products from the marketplace. It would provide responsible conduct in the industry. It would give quality and oversight. Um, it would limit claims that these products make. And we would answer all the questions and concerns that the regulators had articulated to us and keep products on the market. Now, that was our objective. Okay. So imagine this. If you were in front of this meeting with 26 companies and I stand at the front of the room and say, Hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to engage FDA. We're going to engage the regulators and we're going to come up with a plan and we're going to work together with the government and it's all going to be okay. Who's with me? <laughs> right. You're looking around. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else was, they asked me, how'd you get to be president of NASC? Well, I was furthest from the door and I didn't wear my tennis shoes that day. <laughs> right? I'm laughing. That's good. So let's let we, cause we, I want to dive into some specifics, but the point is, which is a very good enlightening enlightenment is you guys are really scrutinized more than people realize. That's yeah. number one. Yeah. Number two, it has exploded, and I think yeah. you, as a pet parent and as somebody in the medical field, as you've been, so uh, you yeah. said, there, there's too many choices. Right. There are, there are, and so the first thing that I would say to your listener is, number one, don't believe everything you read on the internet, right? Because right. some information is great, but some information, you know, you, you so you got to trust but verify. Well, I, I was a former newspaper reporter where my editor said, if your mother tells you she loves you, check it out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, what, what is it? Don't believe uh, anything you uh, read and only half of what you see or something like right. that. But yeah. So verify your sources. And this is really important. Yeah, right. And that's why I'm glad the NASC is a, around because people need guidance. They want to help. Yeah. We've got a few seconds before we have to go on a, a, a break. But I want you primed, Mr. Bill Bookout, to tell us the ABCs on CBD. And we're okay. going to do this after we take this break. So you all, you know the drill. Sit and stay. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Arden Moore's Four-Legged Life Show. I'm your host, Arden Moore, and I am talking to one of the big guys in the field of pet supplements. He is Bill Bookout. And for all you YouTube listeners, right there behind him is the beautiful marmalade being a camera hound for a feline. I think that's pretty cool. Um, but I, before COVID, right before COVID, I went to Global Pet Expo, which is one of the biggest trade shows, uh, Bill. And I, you know, I'm coming back, but I got to tell you almost Every, like I would say that every six booth was something to deal with um, supplements, especially CBD. So tell us a little bit about the ABCs on CBD. Sure. Um, let me just say as far as supplements, you know, the COVID events really, really caused tremendous explosion in growth in mm -hmm. supplements because mm -hmm. of, you know, our, our concern for immune health and we want to maintain healthy immune system. So as far as specific to CBD and cannabis, cannabis derived compounds, mm -hmm. I've been on the tip of that spear since 2015 when I was on Governor Hickenlooper's committee with Kahalos Glenn, the Colorado Department of Agriculture. I've testified in front of FDA. Here's the bottom line. The bottom line is this. FDA 
has been very consistent in their opinion. The states have also been very consistent in their opinion that hemp or any cannabis derivative like CBD, and let me separate those two, okay? Yeah. Right. Hemp is the same plant as marijuana, but the THC content is less than 0.3%. Therefore, it's a different substance. And we um, need to let people know that THC is the psychogenic agent. So we're not going to have anything in these products that are going to get our pets high or it's toxic, right? That's absolutely correct because it's a requirement that the THC concentration be tested and verified both in raw materials as well as finished products that it's below 0.3%. Okay. Now, NASC goes on to, if companies make a claim for CBD, we require testing for that as well and verification. Okay. We, we require that from the company, but we also require, um, we do independent product testing for CBD products, just like we do glucosamine or chondroitin or other things. So, but neither hemp nor CBD are approved substances for use in animal food or animal supplements for, which are products for a non-nutritional health benefit. Let me clarify that because that could be a little bit confusing. Yeah. Products that are similar to human dietary supplements, if they have ingredients that are not determined to be essential for contributing vitamins, minerals, nutrients for daily life, right? Right. Glucosamine, chondroitin, MSM, there's no daily nutritional requirement for those ingredients. There's no daily nutritional requirement for CBD either. Now, it might be great for supporting the endocannabinoid system. It might be great for helping the immune system. You're or... going to be my Scrabble partner. Look at the little <laughs> words he's just saying. Yeah, go for it. Keep uh, going. CBD is not approved for use in animal food because, in my opinion, in all the data and research, and as long as I've been involved in this issue, I haven't seen any science that right. suggests that it would be nutritionally beneficial. So... NASC positions CBD exactly the same as we do other ingredients that are for non-nutritional health benefits like joint products or SAMe okay. or coenzyme Q10, right. right? We are also doing a safety study right now, which the board of directors authorized that meets the parameters that FDA Center for Veterinary Medicine has articulated to us. They want to have more confidence that these substances are safe. We're within one week literally today. Today is August 1st. We're recording this. Go ahead. That's right. We're within one, re one week of completing that clinical process to demonstrate that the that CBD, CBDA, and CBDG are safe for use in animal, uh, for in animal products up to five milligrams per kilogram body weight. And we also have a control group. So it's a very robust study. Um, we've invested a lot of money in that study to demonstrate safety. The one thing that it doesn't do, it, it's not a, a study like a pharma study where we would right. identify a toxic level because we don't, we, don't want to, we don't want to have to euthanize animals proving a substance is safe, right? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So we're not euthanizing any animals. It's a straight safety study, and we'll present that data to FDA this fall, and therefore we hope to position CBD products that, that the regulatory agencies would allow these substances to be marketed for the benefit of pets and consumers, pet owners, under enforcement discretion, just like they do 6,500 other products that are out there today. Yeah, and, and for folks you know, people have been using CBD to kind of reduce, you know, separation anxiety, uh -huh. uh, for pain, for yep. swelling of joints, uh, for, um, you know, uh, skin issues. And, and so I think I would love when things get down the road, I'd love to have you back to kind of do a follow-up on yep. this. But the, the point is we don't eat everything we need to eat to get everything our body needs, and neither right. do our dogs or cats. And so we need, you say there are two types of supplements. You know, there's the, the nutritional and the health. So yep. can you kind of explain the difference? Yep. Yeah, very good question. Very, very good question. Supplements are not a magic bullet. I don't care what they are, right? So uh, supplements for a non-nutritional health benefit, um, th th they shouldn't be viewed as magic bullets. They are okay. a component of a comprehensive care program, veterinary care, uh, routine checkups, allopathic medicine, diet, exercise, environment, all the things that you know and supplements can be an important component of that. 
Okay. So selecting the right product for the right purpose for the right life stage in, in your dog or cat or pet's life is extremely important. And then the question is, what product do I pick? Because there's thousands <laughs> yeah. of choices out there, right? right? So then the trust but verified thing comes in. Most importantly, people want to pick a quality product first, right? Everybody out there has the greatest product in the world. Well, that's called um, marketing. That's right. So let's get below the marketing uh, surface. What are some things people should be looking for on a label or what should they be looking for at the company's website that are good indications that this has been tested and it may be a good choice? And, I, and we can't forget to bring our veterinarian into the discussion. Yeah, absolutely. So I always tell people there's a couple things you can absolutely take to the bank. Okay. Now, number one, if you compare two different products and the label looks similar, Mm -hmm. and one of them costs half as much as the other one, stop and ask yourself, why is that? Right? Because cheap products are usually cheap for a reason. Okay. Number two is companies that make claims that sound too good to be true probably are. I would absolutely avoid companies that make claims for, you know, they're going to help with arthritis, cancer, uh, Parvo, Cushing's disease, any other disease process. Okay. Because they're not only magic bullets, they, even though, again, my own experience with my own dog with cancer, I have no doubt that that supplement was an important component of helping my dog's immune system that, you know, helped him live a couple of years longer with me, quality of life. But companies that make claims that sound too good to be true uh, probably are avoid companies that make over references to disease. They're breaking the law. They make the industry look bad. And that's true for human products as well. Okay. And right. what about third-party testing? Good question. So we hope that people would look for the NSC seal. We have audit programs. And when a company joins NASC, there are specific requirements they have to meet. They have to have a written quality manual that controls all of their processes and verifies everything that happens upstream, including what they do. Okay. Independent product testing, proper labeling, adverse event reporting, and uh, uh, post-market surveillance. Those are all components. We do an independent audit that includes product testing to verify these companies are all implementing those standards. I like so, it. So we've got about a minute left. So we're saying to people, look for the NASC uh, seal. seal. Well, Very easy. good. Make sure that you work with your veterinarian and never give your pet any supplement without talking to your vet because it might counterindicate what they're eating. And also don't, don't be afraid to pick up the phone, call the company, ask them how long they've been in business, ask them about who can you call if you have a question. So trust, but verify. If they take, if oh your my listeners gosh, take you away, just said my favorite word, say it yeah. again. Yeah, if you take away, if your listeners take away one thing, trust, but verify. And Bill, look out, I'm a fan now. You are, <laughs> you have, you are passionate about dogs and cats. I mean, I know your two kids are sleeping through this interview, but I know they're sucking it all up. But <laughs> any last parting words? We want people to go to animalsupplements.org. Check out your site. Got a lot of great information. What's your last thing you want to say? Well, I just want to say thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity. Our goal at NASC is to help. <clears throat> and I, get, I get choked up because you're right, and I appreciate you saying I am passionate. We want you know, our member companies to positively impact the lives of millions of animals in this country and throughout the world every single day. And that's why I do what I do. So I do it for the animals. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you so much. Hey, um, my pleasure, Bill. And everyone, that's it for our show today. I want to give a pause up to our special guest. We had dog chef Kevin Matthew on, and of course, just now, Bill Bookout. Um, I also want to give a special shout out to our sponsor, Tevra, the maker of great pet products. And most of all, I want to thank all you pet pals for tuning in and all the stations airing our show from coast to coast. You can subscribe by going to fourleggedlife.com. So until next time. This is Arden Moore saying to all you two, three, and four-leggers out there, pause up! Thanks so much for making our tails wag by watching this guest interview from Arden Moore's Four-Legged Life. Four -legged.
Four-Legged Life. Make sure to subscribe so you're up to date with all of our Four-Legged Life content. Four-Legged Life. Four-Legged Life.